Hi, we're going to look at cladograms today. In front of you, what you see is an example of a cladogram. There is a hagfish, a perch, a salamander, a lizard, a pigeon, a mouse, and a chimp. Then we also see jaws, lungs, claws or nails, feathers, fur, memory, memory glands. And so the, the question becomes, is what is this? Well, cladograms are a prediction of how organisms are related to each other through evolutionary standards. And so we're trying to figure out really is how closely related are them? Are they? And cladograms really are considered more of a hypothesis. However, a phylogenic tree that we often use, which is the same thing, it looks very similar, are one trees that have actually been proven to be true there's DNA evidence to back it up, and so they're no longer considered a hypothesis, but more of considered actual true evidence of true evidence of how those organisms have evolved over time. So the question becomes, is how do we read this cladogram? So what we were first want to look at all the parts. And so you have the organisms, and as you look at the organisms, you're going to notice that we have the hagfish here, we're going to start with the hagfish, and you're actually going to, as time goes on, the animals are going to move from left to right. So notice here that our line goes left to right, going up. What that means is that the organisms here at the bottom are the oldest. These are the ones that are considered the least evolved. And so remember that <coughs> when we talk about evolved, we are talking about change and development. And so these are the organisms that have the least amount of change and development as time has progressed. And then here at the top are most evolved organisms, ones that have changed and developed the most across time. And so what we want to do is we want to we want to look at the different parts. And so again, we know we're the oldest and we're the newest, basically, or the most recently evolved and recently changed are now on our diagram. We want to look at the characteristics. And so here, there are characteristics along the line that are for the organisms. And so we want to look at specifically how those characteristics relate to those each organism. So if we notice here, this person here at the bottom, there's not an actual organism here, but this is the one who's considered the common ancestor. So we're going to go back and we're going to think about that for a second. Our common, so it means that all of these organisms evolved from this particular one. And so what that means is that every single one of these organisms have the same traits as this organism here. But once they begin to change, their traits are different from the common ancestor. So let's look at some examples. And so we, if we want to know which trait separates our hagfish here and our perch here, we want to look at our line. And so here, the jaws are the characteristic that changes a hagfish and a, a difference between a hagfish and a perch. Because if we look at here, everything below the word jaws, those organisms do not have jaws. Everything above jaws, every single one of those do have a jaw. So a hagfish does not have a jaw, but a perch does, and that is a difference between them. So let's look at another example. So let's take the perch and the salamander. What is the difference between the perch and the salamander? That is lungs. They, your perch has gills, your salamander has lungs. So not only does a salamander have lungs, but so does a lizard, a pigeon, a mouse, and a chimp, because they all come after that point. So we want to look into what determines the difference between a salamander and a lizard. Well, claws or nails. Salamanders and lizards do not have claws or nails, but lizards do. And so do pigeons, and so do mice, and so do chimps. 
as we continue to go on. There is not a characteristic here on this particular cladogram that changes between lizards and pigeons. However, you could come up with another reason, another way, another characteristic that determines how they are different in that aspect. Another change as we go through here is the evidence of fur or memory, memory glands. Pigeons or birds do not have those things. However, mice and chimps do. Notice there is another trait here. And what that means is that this trait is more specific to the organism at the end here. And so feathers are more related to, to birds. You would not place feathers here on this line because that would mean everything after it would have feathers. But we know that mice and chimps do not have feathers, therefore we could not put that trait on that main ancestral line. Now if we wanted to make a, a difference between a chimp and a mouse, we could add another trait there. And that trait could be anything from the um, opposable top, um, possible thumbs or the fact that they can walk on their hind legs. Um, so there's different things that you could add there that do change and so the different characteristics help us determine how they are related. And so going back to that concept, if I'm looking at this, the closer two organisms are together, the more related they are. So in this particular example, the closest relative to the chimp is the mouse. The organism that is the most unrelated to the chimp is your hagfish. Because your hagfish is further away. And so you have to compare the distance between the organisms to determine how related they are to each other. So I hope this helps you figure out how to read a cladogram and kind of look at what the characteristics are. So remember that your characteristics or traits are at the bottom. Um, your charts can also look a little different. And so looking here, this is another example. This diagram is means the same thing as this diagram. They just look a little bit different. Whereas this one, time started here and moved this way. Time starts here and moves this way and this one. And so what you have to find is the here was my common ancestor. Here is my common ancestor. So that end point, regardless of where it's at, that end point is my common ancestor group. That is where it's at. And so here, notice that the organism that has the least amount of traits is here at the end. It's the lancelet. As we go through, we as we leave the common ancestor, we know that they begin to change because the organisms begin to have a vertebral, vertebral column. And so that began your lamprey. And then you also have your tuna and your salamander. So as I look through here, everything after this point has a vertebrae, vertebral column. Then it changes because then these particular organisms will have jaws, or hinge jaws, excuse me, and then they'll have walking legs, an amniotic leg, and then the, specifically the leopard here will have hair. And so it's different because the turtle doesn't have hair. But <clears throat> as I go through here, you can see that the traits are specific to each set of organisms. The same information that's on this one can also be drawn this way.